hello everyone I decided to come outside and record this video because it's got a little rain and I just wanted to be outside change of scenery I guess so today we're gonna look at developing evidence-based practice questions a part of every EBP model you look at is interested in answering questions so we have to be able to answer or ask rather our question correctly in order to be able to find the answers that we need. So this presentation is going to kind of show you the general framework of how we ask and later how we will answer evidence-based practice questions. So there's two kind of broad ways that we ask questions and you're going to see these two acronyms used a lot in this class. Basically it's the PO, PIO or the PICO, PICO acronyms. You all are going to be asking your own PO or PICO question. So when I talk about an EBP question in this class, I'm either talking about a PO or a PICO question. So basically let's see what these words or letters even mean. The P is for population. So basically what what kinds of people are we interested in learning more about? Um, you can be very specific or very general here. So general would be like pediatrics. Okay, that's broad. How do I know what pediatrics means? Am I talking more about school age children? Am I talking about adolescents? Am I talking about, um, you know, infants? So you sometimes need to be a little bit more specific depending on what your question actually is. Um, it also could be inpatients. So inpatient post-operative patients could be your population of interest. Maybe your population of interest is nurses like night shift nurses or critical care nurses or um, novice nurses, new graduates. So you have to define what that population of interest is for you. Preferably in this class, you're going to pick something clinically, so not necessarily nurses, but something more so about um, patients, because we want to look at patient outcomes, preferably in this class. Um, so then, now that we know who our, our people are, we need to look at our intervention of interest. So that would be the I in both PICO and PO. So an intervention is something we do. It's something we manipulate. We as nurses know what interventions are. You know, we do interventions on our patients all the time. We administer medications. We do preventative things like turning patients in the bed, um, floating their heels off the mattress. We um, administer IV medications. We do wound care. So we know what interventions are. But in your particular practice, there's got to be some intervention you're interested in learning more about. So that's kind of where we're going with this question. And I'll have some examples on some later slides to show you. Um, sometimes we have a C, a comparison. That's not always necessary. Um, that's why I give you the option of whether you want to do a PO or a PICO question. So you get to choose if you want to compare the intervention against some alternative. Okay, so in some of the questions I have as examples later, there are comparisons. So you'll see what that looks like. And then all of them have to have an outcome of interest. So by us doing this intervention, what is it that we hope will change? Maybe it's pain management, maybe it's decreased falls, maybe it's decreased length of stay, but somehow we have to have an outcome that's measurable here as well. Um, you can see that there are sometimes other letters added to this EBP question like T for time or S for setting. We're not necessarily going to get into that. However, if you think that the particular question you want to answer would benefit from a T or an S, let me know and I can kind of give you some guidance. But for now, we're going to really focus on PO and PICO questions only. Okay. So these are a couple of templates on what your question could look like, but know that you don't have to follow this verbatim. So PO at the top does not have a comparator, and the one on the bottom does have a comparator. That's really the only difference. Your question that you're going to create in this class has to have at least three things in it. Population, intervention, and outcome. It's up to you whether you add a comparator or not. So these are a couple of samples. The main thing I want you to get from looking at these examples is that a well-written question, you can pick out the individual components. So I should be able to read these and tell what the PIO and maybe the C are. Okay, so the first one. In children ages 6 months to 17 years with acute otitis media, is symptom resolution similar for topical treatment, which would be eardrops in the in the 
antibiotic ear drops and or, I mean, excuse me, compared to treatment with systemic antibiotics. So if we have a six month old or a three year old, do we necessarily need to give them systemic antibiotics if ear drops local antibiotics would work better? So our, we can see that this is a well-written question because we can see all of the components. So our population is pediatrics, children six months to 17 years. So they've spelled that out very specifically with acute otitis media. So not just all kids, they have to have a diagnosis of AOM. Our intervention of um, interest is topical eardrops. Okay, so more localized treatment. The comparison is systemic antibiotics, so the full body, okay? And then what our outcome is, is going to be symptom resolution, whatever that would be, pain, redness, fever, whatever we define to be our outcomes. Here's one more example. Can participation in a structured exercise class three times a week result in reduce, reduce rates of self-reported chronic constipation in elderly residents of an assisted living facility? So our population is elderly residents of assisted living facilities. Our intervention of interest is a structured three times a week exercise program. Do we have a comparison? Not really, but what I want you to know is that most every question does have a comparison. It just might not be explicit. Um, so we can kind of infer that the comparison would be those who do not participate in the three times weekly exercise classes. You don't have to necessarily spell it out. So this is, would be just a PO question, not with a comparison. And then our outcome would be the self-reported chronic constipation. So we may have them keep a diary or something like that to where they're telling us how often they are able to use the restroom. These are a couple more examples. I'm not going to read them all for sake of time. If you would like to pause the recording and look over these and see if you could figure out what those components are, you can feel free to do that. But I'm going to move forward to our final slide. Basically, my last slide is just showing you the difference between a background and a foreground question. In this class, we are looking for foreground questions. A background question is something we kind of already know the answer to. We could look in any textbook and figure out the answer. So why would we want to go through a whole process of looking up evidence and literature databases if we could just look up one book and find the answer? So background question examples on this table is what is, the, what is sepsis or when do the effects of Lasix peak? I could look up a drug book and figure that out. So that's not a question we're wanting to ask. However, a foreground question, I can't. I would actually have to go out and perform a research study in order to find the answer to these questions. So for example, does hourly rounding, if compared with no rounding, actually affect fall rates in those adults who were hospitalized? And then finally, if we have mechanically ventilated patients, how does a weaning protocol versus not having a weaning protocol affect their length of stay in the ICU? So those are things that I would have to go out and, fit and do research on. I can't open up a textbook and find a hard and fast answer for those types of questions. So as you start going through this recording, I hope that you've thought of some topics you're interested in learning more about. Because ultimately, your steps that you are going to be doing is going to be asking a foreground question, either in a PO or PICO format. So I hope you start thinking and developing that sense of inquiry of what you want to learn more about. And that needs to be individualized. It needs to be something you're interested in, not something I tell you, because it should be something that can make improvements in your practice.